Hello designers, welcome back to the new video on our Figma UI Kit series. So if you're new here, I would suggest you to start with the first video on this playlist. You'll find the link for that on the card somewhere at the top. That'll give you a bit of a context on what we are doing on this series. But if you have been following along with me so far, then we are good to go. In our today's video, I'm going to show you how we can create uh, interactive loaders. So loaders are used on the screen when you have a service that is running in the background and you want to keep the user waiting, right? So when the user sees a loader, they know that something is happening at the background and they are ready to wait right so we'll see how we can create simple loaders that we can use on our designs so first thing I'll show you a demo on the UI kit on what we created and then I'll be showing you how to create this from the scratch right so without any further ado let's jump straight onto my screen and see how to create this from scratch so the first thing here is the UI kit that I shared with you guys so you can see that there are three demos or three uh, loaders that we have so let's quickly go to the demo here and drop it here and see how these behave so I'm gonna go to the assets and let's search for the loaders here it is is. and let me drop all of these three here and see how these work so just to see how they behave I'm just gonna drop all of these here assigning it to the center and now simply play this frame right so I'm just gonna play the frame and there you go you can see that how these work uh, small micro interactions just to indicate that the screen is loading right so we'll see how to create this in this uh, video I'll be showing you how to create this circular motion one because this is very simple and it's a very common one so we'll see how to create this and I'll explain you how the rest of the things work on the UI kit as well and then you can go ahead and create more advanced ones right so i'm gonna go to a new fresh file here so here we have a fresh new figma file the first thing is i'm gonna drop in a frame right here so i'm just gonna drop in a small frame and the next thing i'm just gonna drop in the image as a reference just to see what we need here so the first thing is we need a circle like a donut shape and then we also need a smaller circle just to give it this rounded corner at one edge so basically two elements are needed here so the first thing i'm gonna take a circle so just drawing a circle here and let's uh, keep the width like like let's say 34 and this looks good and the next thing we want to create the donut shape right for that once you hover on the circle you get this small dot here which says arc so you gotta click on this and just drag it a bit down and leave it at the same position right that will reveal a set of new options here so by default you won't get these options only if you alter this you get these options so once you have these options the second one is the ratio and the first one is the sweep so we want to change the ratio here so I'm gonna leave the ratio at 60 or let's say 59 so this one looks like a donut it. and you can also create this with just the tools on the screen that you see so just to give you an example here again I'm gonna take a circle once you click on this you just have to move it a bit down and that will reveal a new option here which is a ratio so you got to just click on this and move it back right and that will create the donut and you can just pull this back and fill it again so that is how you create it with just the tools on the screen without any values on the right so for now I'm just gonna delete this again we need uh, to apply the gradient here so for that I'm just gonna go to the fill tab here click on this and we need a angular gradient because that will create this effect that you see here so I'm just gonna click on the angular option here and at the first color let's choose the primary color and at the other end you can leave this at 0% transparency for now as you can see this one has a clockwise motion and what we created here looks like an anti-clockwise motion so we want to change this you can either flip this uh, circle or you can also just swap these colors here so I'm just gonna move the color to this end and this one to this extreme end so this one will create the same look and feel of this gradient that you see here so that looks fine and the next thing is we want to drop in a small circle here so that it has this rounded edge here so I'm just gonna take another circle and just gonna fill this part here so for that I think I need somewhere around 7 by 7 yeah that looks good and then we're gonna fill this with the color at this extreme edge right so that it matches the fill that we see here so now we have the same structure that we see here uh, we can also increase the gradient of the blue a bit more so that it reaches still here so I'm just gonna select this we are gonna select the gradient color here the primary color here and then just just give it a slight bluish shade right so I'm just gonna move it right here so that we have that perfect blend of blue okay this looks good to me so it's up to your preference how you want to fill this up right so this looks good to me and just gonna delete this again and this is gonna act as our very base component and then we can create the variance and add the interactions to it so I'm just gonna group this and we are gonna call this as a loader so here we have the loader and I'm gonna create a component out of it so we have created a component I'm just gonna zoom out and increase the frame height here so we have our base component ready and let's add variance to it and see how we can add the interactions so I'm just gonna add a variant here and we need four variants 
right? Because we want to rotate it at four different angles. So for that reason, I'm just going to add two more right here. And now we can start changing the states that we want. So in the first state, this looks good. And then in the next state, we want to rotate this, right? So one thing you got to note is if you rotate the main parent of the variant, it won't make any change or any difference to the variant. So you have to go inside this and rotate the group that we created. Whereas if you don't use a shift and start rotating it, you will see that there are decimal values and we don't want that. So use shift and that will rotate it at every 15 degrees. So we have this one at one. So we have this at zero. Then we have this one at minus 90. And let's go inside this and rotate this to minus 180. So I can give minus 180 here. And finally, this one should be minus 270. If you don't know those values, as I told you, just use shift and rotate it manually so that you know what are the values that you want to place here. So with that, we have set all the rotations for the variance that we have here. And the next thing we want to do is just add interactions to it so that it starts rotating automatically. So for that, I'm going to come to the prototype tab here, select the first variant and drag a link to the next one. And this should be after delay. So after delay of one millisecond, and let's keep this at 300. So you got to set it at linear so that it happens in a constant motion. So that one is done. And we want the same interactions for all the rest of the things as well, right? So for that, I'm just going to select and drag interactions to the rest of the things. I'm not going to change any settings there. We'll do that all together. So this is a trick that you can learn. So now that we have added links to everything, you can use shift and select all of these rings, right? So once you can select these interactions, you can add the properties all at once. So I've selected all the interactions and I'm going to select this after delay one millisecond and the uh, linear at 300. So that looks good. So this is a small trick that you can use to change the settings of multiple interactions. So before this was not possible, but now you can select multiple interactions and change the settings at once. So that will save you a lot of time. So as you can see, now we have everything done. So here basically the states changes automatically from each of these and it gives an impression as if the, this thing is rotating, right? So let's see if this works. I'm going to take a small frame here and then going to the assets, go to the local components and just drop this one right here. So we have it here. Let's play this and see if it works. So I'm just going to play it. And there you go. You can see how the loader keeps rotating and that is how you can create a simple loader. So let me just go back to the UI kit that we created and I'm going to go back to the interactive components. So just to explain you how the rest of the things work here. So in this case, as you can see, I just have the same thing, but here uh, we use the sweep option and we created a very small arc here. And then we just grouped it uh, along with a bigger donut circle that is of the neutral color and then just group both of these and start rotating it at different angles. And that is how you create this. And coming to this example, we have five variants here. So each of these variants, e one circle is moving at a time, right? So in this one, we have all the circles at one level here. The first circle goes up, just changing the position to the top. And here we are changing the position of the second circle. And in this case, we are moving the third circle. Circle. Also, we are bringing back the first circle down, right? So that is how you create different states and using the same interactions, we link all of these with the after delay and give it a linear link everything with after delay of one millisecond and give it some 30, 300 milliseconds. And in this scenario, right, you can use the other uh, easing options like gentle or bounce that will give a different feel, look and feel to it. So you can play around with this and try different loaders that you want to create. So that is it for this video, guys. I hope you understood how we can create these simple uh, loaders and in our next video we're going to see how to create the bottom navigation that we see in all the latest mobile apps that we see nowadays so we'll see how to create that from scratch and as always thanks for watching and i'll catch you in the next one